I am writing a paper on global warming for a class in English. The first place I look for information is online. I'm opening up Google right now. Take me to Georgia Southern website. Go to Google. Enter that. And I'm going to type in scholarly articles on global warming. Articles on global warming. Okay, clicking on the first link. Okay, it's uh, edf.org. It looks like it's credible because of .org. Scrolling down. Human activity is causing global warming. Piques my interest. Reading the article, scientists have closed the case. Human activity is causing Earth to get hotter. Going to Control Alt F. Where is it? Alt F. Shift Alt F. There we go. It's Control F. <laughs> for the search bar, I'm going to type in uh, keywords, global warming. Alright, only two pop up on this page, and it's the title in the bottom. Great. I'm going to back out and go to another link. Okay. I'm going to the third link. And I'm at scholarly articles. Go into the first link for the scholarly articles. Alright. Rice yields decline with higher night temperature from global warming. Going to do the same thing. Control F. Enter global warming. There's one of four. Alright. I'm going to read the abstract of this research paper. The impact of the project. Is I see some facts in here I'd like to use in my paper. I'm going to go to Microsoft Word. Microsoft Word, I'm going to open it up. Alright, so direct studies on effects. Observe climate change on crop growth. So I'm going to highlight this sentence. Copy and paste into Microsoft Word. All right. Oop. I'll go down a little bit more. All right. Back out of there. I'm going to go to the fourth link for global warming and sea level. Let's see what that's about. It's showing about greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. It's uh, sciencemag.org, so I think it's credible. I'll read it. Looks like it's pretty good facts. Greenhouse gases in the year 2000. Already additional 320% sea level. So, I'm going to go there, highlight that little tidbit. Copy good word. Paste it in there. I'm going to keep that tab open so I could cite it later. Alright, I'm going to go Google again, global warming, articles, global warming effects, articles. Go 
on to the first link. Fingerprints on global warming on wild animals and plants. I'm going to open that up. It's uh, nature.com, so you need to look at the citing source because it's not a credible URL. Nature Publishing Group. Sounds legit. Just have to read it and find out if it's an opinion or facts. Over the past hundred years, the global average temperature has increased rapid rate, although species have responded to climatic changes throughout their evolutionary history. Alright. Alright, there's nothing here that I like. Alright, going to the sixth link. Alright, sciencedirect.com. There's another abstract. A couple of keywords I like, like climate change. Merch provide a framework. Okay. This definitely does not help me at all. Just a bunch of citing sources, so back out of that. Alright, opening up one other link. And then control F Global Warming Enter. I get five hits. Temperature dependence of soil organic matter decomposition and the effect of global warming on soil organic sea storage. Huh. Decreasing. Uh, it's too long, so I back out. Alright, so I'm going to pick which side because. It's going to be a paper. I'm going to say pros and cons. Pros and cons of global warming. Go and go to the regular Google as on Scholar. Cut web paste. Mm. Pros and cons of global warming. All right. It's global warming man made. I like that. This funding has accepted hundreds of climate experts and governments worldwide. No one can ignore change. It's just random quotes in here. An individual person. I'm going to highlight this because it says that human beings through emission cause the greenhouse gas, which then causes carbon dioxide, which eats the ozone. Copy that, I'm gonna paste it in there. Alright. I'm gonna leave that open. Go to the next one. I'm gonna look at just regular cons now. I feel like there's gonna be a lot more of those than pros be easier. Going to advantages and disadvantages. Shows both point of view, so I like that link. In February 2007, United Nations released a scientific report. I see a scientific report, and I think it's credible, even though it says geography.about.com. 
that's happening it will happen for centuries 90% certainty activity of humans has been primary cause so that sounds good I'm gonna highlight that part I'm gonna copy and paste in word all right going back over and then those conclusions and the conclusions of scientists of advantages so there's a small number of advantages I'll find those so I go to Google I type in advantages on global warming now instead of cons It's the same web page, cool. Back out, go to 10 possible benefits of global warming. Hmm. And then it shows some advantages like more usable land. I'm gonna use these advantages and choices right now and put them right in my paper alright so what's number one warmer weather is safer people enjoy sunny climate now increase interest in alternative energy I'm gonna put that in the paper All right, kind of have an idea what my paper is going to be about now. Some facts. Keep all those tabs open. Uh, I would start a introduction paragraph. Make sure fonts right, everything's right. I'm going to sum my sources and do a works cited page. I'm going to insert blank page. All right. I've been work cited. <laughs> now I'm gonna go to Easy Bib. Easy Bib. Free. Bibliography. All right. Let's go into the website and I just. Copy and paste the URL into EasyBib. Inside it. All right. It gives me a citation. Press continue. Hmm. Electronically published is today's date. Uh, yeah. Eighteen. Yep. All right. Um, don't really know contributors. Got to go back to the page. So I'll scroll down to the bottom of the page because that's where creators and the Copyrights from Lattisor.com, all rights reserved. So you can't plagiarize. Later, we're going to have to go back into Microsoft Word and make them our own words. Well, some of them. Probably going to quote one or two directly. All right.
I am writing a paper on the hyperbaric chambers and their effect on the human body for a class in chemistry. The first place that I'm going to go is I'm going to open up Google Chrome. It's better than Internet Explorer because Internet Explorer is slow. And I will go to Google. Now that I'm at Google, I'm going to start by simply doing a keyword search of hyperbaric chambers. And, well, I got hyperbaric oxygen therapy, but that's not quite what I want. Oh, there we go. Hyperbaric chamber. And the first thing that pops up is an ad. Not really interested in any type of ads. So I'm just going to scroll on down. There's a Wikipedia. I don't generally like using Wikipedia, but it is an interesting place to go ahead and get the juices flowing by what might actually be used. So I'll usually just open up Wikipedia just to check and see you know what what where else can I take this from and so basically it's talking about how hyperbaric chamber is the medical use of oxygen at a level higher than atmospheric pressure um, that's unique and so I'm just gonna continue just kinda skim this thing and see what might actually be interesting and if there's any dangers or something that might come with it um, here's the medical uses that they have that's something I need to look at and they might have a lot here that seems like it's good for fixing which is something that definitely applies to my paper um, it's interesting that huh this says that parent that patients who have hearing issues might have help from the uh, hyperbaric chambers and just just continue on with all the things hum okay now that I got kind of an idea and oh here we go there's hyperbaric chambers and actually gives a couple of pictures and gives me an idea what they might actually look like and gives an example of what they are a hard chamber that consists of and so on and so forth and just kind of explaining a little bit of what they are. Now that I've kind of got an idea of what hyperbaric chambers sort of are and what they might actually be used for, I'm going to go back to my search and see if I can find a better site because Wikipedia is not the best. Um, here's the Mayo Clinic. I've heard of the Mayo Clinic and I know that they're a good source. They know what they're talking about for the most part. Um, so I'm going to pull them up and see what they have. Here they go. The definition, a hyperbaric oxygen therapy involves breathing pure oxygen in a pressurized room, which would be the hyperbaric chamber. So they use it for scuba diving, uh, serious infections, bubbles of air in your blood, vessels, and wounds that won't heal as a result of diabetes or radiation. Hmm. So now... I got a little bit of stuff from here. I like the definition and I like the fact that it's from the Mayo Clinic. So I'm going to go open up Word. And there it was. Open up Word. Now that Word's open, I am going to take a copy of the uh, address up at the top and paste it into my first spot and then underneath it put down some of the interesting thing that I'm interested in just by copying and pasting now this is not actually what I will be putting into my paper it is just a rough set of notes I'll take what I find interesting I won't take the entire entire article I will go say for this little spot right here the in a hyperbaric chamber um, paragraph I will just copy it go to Word and paste it in there and then I'd go back and see what else is there I like this paragraph right here so I will copy and paste it for future reference as well now that I got a couple of things from the Mayo Clinic site I'm going to go back one step and start looking at other sites. Up next we have the hyperbaric chain chamber for the Encyclopedia Britannica. Well, encyclopedias are generally good. They can be a little bit wordy, 
but they generally have really good information. So I'm just going to open that up and look down and just see what the Britannica says about it. Well, that's interesting. It came into use around 1860. Definitely want that fact because the beginning is always a good place to start. So just copying that, pasting it in my Word along with the IP, with the address up on the top. Okay, now that I have that, I'm going to continue looking on this and see if there's anything else. Okay, so most of this that I see in here, I have already, I've already seen on the other site. But it's nice to see that I do actually have what I found on the other site backed up. Because it's always better, if you can find a source that says something, it's good to find backup for it. Because no matter the site, somebody can always make a simple mess up and you won't get the right correction. The United, next up, I'm going to look at the United States National Library of Medicine. That sounds very scholarly. Now that I pulled up the site, I mean, it, it looks like one of those teach you how to deal with problem sites. And it does seem to have some good information about the hyperbaric chambers on here. So, I, I, like, I like that it gives a specific list of what the wounds it can help with. So, I'm going to copy that. Go back into Word, paste it in, and then make sure I put my address with it so I can keep straight where I got what from where. Okay, so now I'm going to go back and don't really see anything else on this page that I like. I'm going to back out. So now, I kind of want to get a little bit better feel of what hyperbaric chambers actually are. So I think I'm going to try to find a hyperbaric chamber uh, sales place. And there seems to be several up here in the ads. Now, they, they're not, they might just be ads in the end, but it, you never know. They might have some interesting information that might actually be useful so now I am just going through learning about the company and, and specifically the one that makes them and it's talking about how many there are how many they've made what all they're trying to do with it they focus specifically on diving medicine which seems to be a very big thing for hyperbaric chambers um, they have some just interesting information about their product <coughs> they have a little quick fact and did you know section um, I'm going to go to their products now <coughs> and see what kind of the products are and what's special about each product. Now I'm on this page and it has several different little things. Um, they're talking about a soft shell one which is not, it fits into two little carry bags and be carried around. So it's not, it's not one of those hard ones that is completely stationary but it's one that can be carried around and is portable. That is pretty neat. Um, I mean there's apparently two different types so I'm gonna just get a little bit of information here uh, I'm just gonna do portable hyperbaric chambers because this is the first place that I really heard of them I didn't see them anywhere else so I'm just gonna I'm gonna keep that in mind I might want to look that up a little bit later considering that there are more now they have a couple of their bigger ones over here such as their Solace 210 so I'm gonna open that up and see what there is about their uh, chamber 
Okay, this one seems to be one of their portable hyperbaric chambers. And it is their most popular model. And some of the things that they have that is special to this one is this setup right here. So I'm going to copy that because that has a lot of information about what actually composes a, a hyperbaric chamber, especially a portable one. So, make sure I get the place from where that was. Don't want to not have that. And now, okay, so I've got about a page of notes, and but I've found a lot about hyperbaric chambers, like what they are, not really how they're made, I don't really, I haven't seen that yet, but I've seen like what they are, how they compress oxygen to create an area for growth and um, protection and healing. But I'm looking for its effects on the bodies. So it sounds like it heals, but I do not have any specific information on how it heals. So I'm going to go back up and do hyperbaric chamber effects on the human body. Now it is pretty specific, and I don't really expect that it'll pull up exactly what I need, but you never know what is out there and it might lead me to something that I can use. So I'm pulling up a lot of Wikipedia. Oh, here's academia.edu. That sounds like that might be something useful. Uh, it looks like I have stumbled upon a um, research paper by Dominic D. Agostino. Um, it does not seem like this site is loading, though. So, unfortunately, I can't look at that. If I could, I would. So, I'm just going to continue on down. And... Here's a hyperbaric oxygenation and pressure effects on medication from Medscape. I don't really know what this is, but I'm going to pull it up and see. Um, here we go. And it's talking about a professor on medications. So the drugs that are already in the body, it seems that what kind of effect it takes on them. But I'm not really looking for the medications part exactly. I'm more looking for just the human body without the medications. So I'm going back up and I'm going to continue on and see what I can find. Um, hmm. Oh, here's a frequently asked questions about hyperbaric chambers. That's I mean that's they might have something. Um Oh, this looks like a really useful place. Uh, it has a lot of information about what it actually consists of, what the two types of chambers are, and just w if it's safe, what does it do, and just kind of how it does it. It doesn't really get into many of the technical information of why it works but oh here we go here are the risk and possible side effects of the hyperbaric chamber treatment so I will really need that considering what my paper is over so I'm just going to copy it paste it in word got a little bit more than I want to so I'll just delete that and go back up and make sure I put in where I got this from and go back get the address and put it in now I had a lot more on that page that I found rather interesting so I'm just going to continue looking 
and there there's a lot of in, information on here so I'm going to keep this in mind might even come back to this at a future date so I'm just going to go in my word and I'm going to go beside it and put just type in more information available just so that I know that yeah I have some information from it but there might be a little bit more that if I need for future information say if I find another site that has information I want to back it up I can come here and see if it matches up correctly I'm going to back up and going to continue on um, here's one right here from Phenom Strength and Conditioning. They seem to have a hyper, uh, one of those mobile hyperbaric chambers that I saw earlier. And it's talking a little bit about it. Now, this is a site that sells them, so it's going to give a lot of the good information about them, but not really any negatives because, I mean, who's going to talk about why something's not right if it you're trying to sell it so I there's a couple of hmm that's unique they talk bring in a law of physics and it says an increase in atmospheric pressure allows for more gas to be dissolved in any given liquid Oxygen, the eighth element of the periodic table, exists as a gas at room temperature. The human body is composed of almost completely water. Gas, under pressure, dissolves in water. Hmm. That is unique and seems to have something to do specifically with the way that oxygen reacts in the human body. So I am going... I'm going to just remember Henry's Law of Physics, and I think I'm going to back up and I'm going to actually Google Henry's Law of Physics and see see if it is a real law and if it does have any bearing on the hyperbaric chamber okay. so. hello I am writing a paper on intellectual property in regards to inventing and software engineering for class intellectual property at Georgia Southern University um, the first place I would look for information would be obviously the internet um, and I just begin the research process by googling what I'm trying to find um, for this particular one as a software engineer um, the the classic IP case that we all use as an example is the Facebook IP dispute between the Zuckerberg between Zuckerberg and the Winklevoss twins. So I would first Google the terms of that case and why it was important, and figure out why the Winklevoss twins lost that case and what they did wrong. I see a few things. Preferably, I would want an official legal document, which is right here. Now, I did see something from a very credible news site, but I'm going to go ahead and look through this. This is basically the um, official document from the courts detailing everything that went on in that room. That's perfect, so I'm going to, for the sake of time, I don't feel like actually reading through this, mainly because I already kind of know what's in there. I've already done this project. I'm just going to copy and paste that URL. I'm in research mode right now, so I'll do my sources later. Um, but I'm not a lawyer, I'm a software engineer, so this CBS News article looks uh, pretty promising as well.
this is um, really good too, so I'm going to save that. Um, I do know, as um, an entrepreneur, that the best way to keep your idea from getting stolen, if you have to um, seek some outside expert um, affiliation or anything like that, they need a software engineer, is uh, to make them sign a non-disclosure or non-compete agreement which legally binds them to never do anything remotely close to what you're trying to accomplish. So I'm just going to pull up a, a template that that's in my opinion where the Winklevoss twins went the most wrong by doing that if, if, if Zuckerberg had signed that he would have had to wait at least two years to launch Facebook even if uh, he didn't write a single line of code for them ever and this would have never been a problem so here's a sample of that And lastly, um, I would look up the intellectual property laws regarding who owns code based on the environment and workstation it was done on in the context of was the computer he worked on owned by the Winklevoss's company or was it his own because that's another legal area. I'm not sure how to word that, so it may take me a few tries on this one to get... Uh, but I do know, for example, in my corporate experience, one of the reasons why we use virtual machines, which is one of the first things that pops up, is uh, if we have a very valuable employee that does important work to the company, and we decide to terminate that employee, all of the work said employee did was on our servers, and we can kick him out the door without any sort of debrief or anything like that. We just have to figure out what it was he was doing. So um, that's the kind of stuff I'm looking for, but this isn't exactly um, what I want in the context of this paper, but I suppose this... Um, this description of what that is kind of relates to what we're doing, so I'll go ahead and save that anyways, just so I don't have to look for it again. Uh, I found something from NSA. Who are the kings of controlling any sort of cyber IP or lack thereof? These are more just security concerns. But um, this is somewhat relevant, so I'll go ahead and save that too. This is a really good one right here. 
I'll put this one at the top. The concept of a social network for the prop for the purpose of this particular case um, doesn't really apply sort of because um, it, it'd be like trying to throw a patent on a on a computer or something like that um, the main way to protect intellectual property in that case goes back to the NDA before you say a word make them sign it make them make yourself legally own him for the next two years so that's the way to go Basically what I'm trying to find is I know one of the best ways to protect your stuff is to supply the workstation for any sort of employees. Just supply the software they use. Um, don't let them, for example, Visual Studio is about a $10,000 software. Um, if your coder uses that to develop what you're asking him to code on his own station, off his own funds, he has a major stake in... Um, what you're doing just based on having that software and having it on his computer and that can turn into a mess so the best way to avoid that is by supplying those workstations in your own network that's up to your security standards um, I'm just having trouble finding an article for that specific because it's kind of honestly I'd be one of the ones writing one of, one of those articles so I'm having trouble finding it But yeah, maybe I would go check that out in the library. Um, I doubt our school library would really have anything on this, but it's rather specific. But um, let's see, for the sake of this experiment... Um, well, I keep up with my sources by mainly just putting them on a notepad doc and then I'll email it to myself if I'm on a public computer. Um, I'll keep up with the sources by revisiting them. If they change, I'll see that because it's live and online. I change my search terms to something else if I don't find what I'm looking for right off the bat for whatever reason. Um, the next place for this particular thing I wouldn't go to a library next I'd probably call my grandfather's patent lawyer for this one um, just consult a professional um, granted my resources are a little wider than your average college student so I don't really think we were ever taught how to source something like that or at least I don't know how um, but that's the next place I would go. Is that good? We're done. All right. One. I am writing a paper on weight loss for a class in English. I'm going to Internet Explorer, and then I'm going to go to Google. And then I'm going to search weight loss. No. How to lose weight. No. Let me search. Is weight 
loss healthy. And the first place I'm going to look for information is on the results Google gives me. And I'm going to look for something with org or edu and avoid.com. This Mayo Clinic thing looks okay. Then I'm just going to read the text. And anything I find interesting, I would like summarize it and put it on a piece of paper and highlight the website address and copy it on Word for later when I need to cite it. Let me just go back to Google. And I might look for a different term, like whether weight loss is on what people say about healthy weight loss or yeah then I found find some another dot work thing it's called healthy weight loss and dieting tips Looks like that might have some information. And then I would read a couple sentences on the top and look at the highlighted words, see what those are about. And that looks cool. I might I might like take some notes on this article too and put it on Word and highlight the address on the website so I can cite it later. And then if I had to look for a scholarly source, I would either go look at Galileo or just go to Google Scholar since I'm already at Google. So, looking for Google Scholar. found Google Scholar. I'm going to type in um, is weight loss healthy? Look at a bunch of long articles and look for something that isn't a book. Maybe this is something. No. High protein, low fat diets are effective for weight loss. Weight loss. This looks interesting when it is in a book. No. Gave me an abstract of it, and then a bunch of little articles. Article sightings. This article sightings. This article. Maybe I'll look at one of these. Effects of high protein diets for fat free. Ooh. Maybe one year weight maintenance after significant weight loss in healthy, overweight, and obese subjects. Maybe that'll look, that's kind of cool. Waiting for it to load. Then it just shows a bunch of words about what they did. And I might read most of it and see if there's anything interesting. 
And if there was anything interesting, I would put it on some on Word and probably highlight the web address too for later when I have to cite it so I don't lose it and keep on moving forward. Maybe I'll look up and see what people say about weight loss being unhealthy. I'm going to show some sites. I mean, sometimes I might look at a dot com site, like eight common unhealthy ways to lose weight, just to see what it says. But dot orgs and dot edus is what I've learned is reliable and acceptable for English class. kind of got a little article about what celebrities do or something and that doesn't look like a good one very much well so probably wouldn't do that one I would probably just click the back button this looks like an article for a newspaper for women's health that won't help me very much let's click the next button on Google see what the next page shows Unhealthy weight loss on Tumblr. I don't think that's good. This has this is a one for EDU. It's a PDF. I guess I'll look at it. Unhealthy weight reduction among adolescents, females. This looks like it's part of a book. I mean, I might use something like this. It talks about females and losing weight and that would be a good another scholarly source if I need it too I'm good <laughs> um, and I would write down take notes and put it on word looking around for more topics and maybe I might type in arguments for weight loss and look at the stuff and I see a lot of dot coms I actually think everything on that page was dot com. I'll go to the next one, see what's next. A dot co. I don't know what that is. I guess I'll avoid it. More dot coms. Maybe I'll look at dot com just to see what they what they're saying on it. See what some arguments other people are saying. Five surprising reasons you're not losing weight. Health.com. Let's see what that says. Beat the weight plateau. Scroll down. Frozen. Scroll down. Ah, there we go. Pretty much telling you why people aren't losing weight, but it's not very long. It's only a paragraph. That's not helpful. Interesting, but not helpful. Let's see. Go back. Da -da 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 back. There we go. Weight loss and unintentional National Library of Medicine. Oh, dot gov site. I guess I'll look at it. Let's see, 
when you lose weight loss unintentionally. Explains on what what it does, causes, and how you should deal with it. That's not going to really help me with my paper. Let's see. Um. Here's another little article that says 10 reasons you're not losing weight. It's a dot com, but let's look at it. Some person named Weinsberger made it from CDE, MS, and RD. And then he gives a bunch of reasons why. It's kind of long. I mean, think about I might use some of the stuff on it and put it on there just as extra source because it doesn't it seems to be accurate she has like a lot of initials next to her name so maybe she's reliable Um, let's see what else would I do. I would, I would probably go back and look at what I have so far and look at the requirements I need and see if I need anything else. Um, maybe I'll... Maybe I'll look at health, what what health things, how would weight loss affect your health? Put it in how would losing weight affect your health? WebMD site pops up, but I don't like WebMD, mainly because the teacher told me it was a bad idea. <laughs> Best way to lose weight, that pretty much answers my question. It's a gov site, let's see what it says. First thing in bullet letters is your weight is important, and it gives a little introduction. I'm reading the first sentence, it looks like it's, I guess, helpful. Um, behaviors that will help you lose weight and maintain it. Setting the right goals. This looks like a good, helpful area. And I would probably, it has some stuff in numbers, like useful goals should be specific, attainable, forgiving, um, walk and that that's pretty much good right there. I would definitely put that on my paper. And there's more stuff like nothing succeeds like success and reward success and balancing your food checkbook pretty much is giving you tips and that's pretty good. I would definitely put that in my paper on losing weight healthy how to lose weight a healthy way. Um, let's see. If I need another scholarly source, I might look at Ga Galileo, Galileo, 